I wanted to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was being able to talk to you and say, this is who I am. I was very open to you. I said, I'm an alcoholic. I can't be a Muslim. Muslims don't drink. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, you take a shahada and we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk tomorrow. And I said, okay. And so I, I, I took my shahada, alhamdulillah. And it was basically an experience that I don't even know how to describe. I literally took the alcohol that I left over in my house. I dumped it all out. I went down and prayed. And it was like I was free. I was literally, I was literally free from, from that lifestyle that I lived, that was encrypted into my mind. That you're a native, you're an alcoholic. You, these are the things that you are. And, you know, it was like this, just a freedom that I've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I remember meeting you for the first time. So, um, and I actually went to your apartment and I saw. There were uh, cases of beer. I mean, uh, there must have been at least 10, 10 uh, 24 packs of beer in your closet. Um, there, was, there was nine to be exact, and I yeah. told you that, well, that's just a week's supply. Yeah, unfortunately. So since you accepted Islam, what has happened to you? You've been Muslim now for how long? I believe it's been eight months. Eight months. So what has happened? Uh, how has your life changed in a, a positive or negative way? Alhamdulillah, my whole life has changed. From, well, mainly I'll just go into briefly about what you guys have done. In the beginning, you know, you guys got me, you told me, okay, you should move into a more, a more Islamic community. I was living in, this, in the Lakeshore area in Toronto here, and it's got lots of alcoholism. You got about 12 or 13 bars, beer stores, and liquor stores. You know, if you're trying to change, you don't stay in the area where, where it's all being influenced. So you encouraged me to move, and I remember the whole month going back and forth, sometimes twice a day, just so I could be in an Islamic community in an area. And I did that for a whole month, and I moved into the area. You guys helped me do that. And basically from there, my life has changed. I mean, since May 5th, I've never taken a drink. I've never missed a call to prayer. Alhamdulillah, my child is, is, is Islamically growing with great knowledge. Um, I'm now married, you know, we're, it's, it's, things have changed so much, it's like it's unbelievable, because just eight months ago, I had children's service involved, they knew of my alcoholism addiction, they were working with me, but it wasn't like I wasn't receiving the message, and to imagine within eight months, all that alcoholism, the whole lifestyle I lived as, as an Aboriginal person had changed from from it, you know, to learn in this last eight months that I, bec I could become fully employed before I was, I was considered myself disabled. Oh, you're disabled because you drink, you, 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 you can't um, do anything productive in society. You know, this is what you do. Aboriginals drink, you either sit on welfare, you collect a disability check, that's your life. You know, you die with cirrhosis of the liver or some other form of disease. That's the life of an Aboriginal person. In Canada, that's what I saw myself as. When I became Muslim, it was like, now I have meaning in life. Now there's an understanding what is life. And the best thing of it all is that now I, I'm productive. I volunteer and work full time. You know, I'm a, somebody. I, I actually do something. You know, I'm married. I have a wonderful wife. My son is happy. The whole world is changing because of what I've learned through Islam. And the fact that my son will not grow up in alcoholism and drugs, he will not follow the statistics, he will not be like my mother, he will not be like my grandmother, my great-grandmother, following this tradition of alcoholism and drugs. So, in my eyes, it's, it's, it's amazing. So we'll, we'll stop you there, and uh, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I have a couple questions, because uh, obviously I know a little bit more about you, seeing you now work at the center, but <laughs> I have a few questions that I think uh, for you that the audience would be interested in hearing about your conversion and what's happened since then. But until then, we'll take a break, and we'll, we'll be back in a, a couple minutes. Assalamu alaikum. Hi, I'm Mohammed Robert Heft. I'm the host of Paradise Forever TV and 5 Minutes for Allah across Canada. And I'm also the president of P4E's New Muslim Support Group. And I'm going to make a plea to you right now that you really take this seriously. 
When I was on the air two years ago, I kept telling people that it does cost money to be on air, but I want everybody to really understand the costs involved. Television is very expensive, but the results are magnificent. I've had people become Muslim from six minutes for Allah. That's six minutes a person has taken their shahada from. Now, if you want to be a part of this, we need at least 500 Muslims to make a pledge between $10 and $25 a month. You can pledge on our website at www.p4e.ca. And welcome back to Paradise Forever TV. I'm your host, Muhammad Robert Heft, and we're interviewing today David Alexanderson, who's now calls himself, he goes by Dawood. Dawood. Uh, Brother Dawood, now I, I have a question for you. you. You told me a story which I thought was amazing. Tell me about the story about uh, speaking with your doctor. Uh, I don't know if it was a few weeks after you converted, but you had spoken to your doctor. Tell us the story about that. Um, basically, when you suffer through alcoholism, you can develop a cyst in the liver or in the brain. And basically, what happened is about two weeks before I became Muslim, I tried to quit alcoholism and I spent four days in the hospital. And they said that I had a, basically a cyst that has developed into, in my brain. And I basically um, was told I couldn't stop drinking. This is very common. When you've become such a, an alcoholic, mm -hmm. your body is adapted only to alcohol. And a couple of weeks after, um, he said, whatever you're doing, uh, keep up with it, whoever you're praying to, keep up with it because I don't see it there no more. I go, well, is this common? He said, no, this is not common. This is, wow, this is amazing. So keep up with your doing. And even a couple of weeks after, I had my blood work. Mm -hmm. um, a week before, about a week and a half before I became Muslim, I had my blood work. My liver count was very high where I was close to going to be on liver dialysis because I was drinking 20 to 30 beer a day. Mm -hmm. And she said, my liver, my liver counts were fine. And to come back a couple of weeks, and a couple of weeks I came after, and she said, yeah, we don't see any, it doesn't even look like you had been drinking. Mm -hmm. My blood pressure, my, everything was normal. Mm -hmm. I find that amazing, especially for someone who started drinking at nine and uh, abused alcohol the way um, 